was what would be a value to students who are in their junior and senior year of college in terms of getting ready for an interview or getting ready to build a resume so that they could present themselves to an employer in any field from any company so that they would be uh, a, a valuable and uh, viable candidate for employment. It's at the time when you're a junior and a senior, we really start thinking about what you want to do and how you put that across in an interview is important. And so what we thought is, why not talk to people or the people on campus at this point in time and get them thinking because they're there's time now to really decide and build your resume, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk to you about the things that we look for in Kraft General Foods when we interview people on campus. I'm gonna tell you why we look for those things, and then what I'm gonna do towards the end of the session is try to say, what can you do as students to help yourselves and show that you're strong in these things that we look for. So with that, I will start. Now, to begin with, when General Foods became Frank General Foods, when the two companies merged, we found out that we were recruiting at the same places, but in different ways. We were looking for different things. So the two companies put their heads together and said, hey, look, as a huge food company, what should we be looking for, and what should we be doing? Not only with people that we're looking for, but how do we evaluate the people that we already have working for us? And they devised something called maps, which is managing and appraising performance. And that wheel that you see up there, which is a circle, with the center has technical and professional experience, and around it you see competitiveness, superior analysis and planning, efficiency, productivity, action orientation, standards of excellence in people, openness and honesty, initiative, aggressiveness, <coughs> risk acceptance, innovation, and if you look on the outer sides of those wheel, or that wheel, you'll see conceptual kinds of competencies, leadership competencies, interpersonal competencies, and personal competencies. And we said, as we evaluate the employees that we have in Craft General Foods, and we have many thousands of employees, we have to have a common way of doing that. So we created these competencies, we defined them, and we said, we'll measure people's performance that work for us via these competencies. Well, lo and behold, people got together and they said, you know, if we're evaluating people on these competencies after they're working for us, what we really should be doing is we should be evaluating people that we recruit before they come into the organization on the same types of competencies. In other words, we should know what we want from our employees while they're here with us those that have been here anywhere from 30 to two years. And we should look for the same types of things when we go out and recruit on college campuses all across the country. Whether we're looking for salespeople, engineers, marketing people, production management people, operations people, what have you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about the various competencies that we think are important when we come on campus. I don't think we look for superior analysis and planning when we're looking for entry-level people. We may in certain, in certain areas, like if we were to go and go to graduate school or, and look for strategic planners or something. But by and large, you know, what we did is we melted down and we said, these things are important to us. And these are the types of things that you should be looking for Mr. or Mrs. Interviewer, line manager that we send as a recruiter to the college campus. The first one 
and in many ways the most important is technical experience. And what we ask is, this is that people demonstrate functional knowledge and technical skills and strengths required for jobs through <coughs> education, training, and work experience. And we ask that people understand and speak intelligently about trends in the field. Well, of course that should make a lot of sense to you because right now you're in college and you're studying various fields to prepare yourself for something that you want to do, hopefully, when you leave college. So it's very important to understand where your education is going, as Dr. Rodriguez said yesterday at lunch, uh, where, you think you're, where you think you want to be and not to hold back, but to position yourself so when you're in your interview, whether you be an engineer or a salesperson or something else, uh, you're prepared. You have the proper coursework and, if possible, your summer work experiences, your interns, your co-ops, et cetera. Uh, do I have to do this? So you can get everybody in. Oh, OK. Um, wait just a second here. I'm not an expert at this. this. We don't have a competency like this. But anyway, um, so, that, so that you can talk about your experiences and you have some experience in the field that you're wishing to get into. Other things might be you may know people, your parents may be in the field, you might have different exposures, you might have a next door neighbor that was very successful and that you want to be successful as well. So it's important to understand what you're doing, it's important to have the background from an educational and training point of view, and it's important that you really look, if you have the opportunity, to get some work experience in the field. The second thing we look at is communication. And what we mean is, when we say communication, is to effectively describe information, concepts and ideas to others in verbal and written fashion, influence others with an intended message. It's very important that in, this, in today's world that you have good written and oral communication skills. What's more important is that when you go into the interview, you have a message about yourself, your background, your technical experience, and you can sell yourself or communicate your message to the employer. And we look for that. So my, my feeling is, is you should be prepared when you go into an interview. You should be ready to answer various questions, and hopefully, as we go through this, you'll understand what they are and the types of things that you're going to want to talk about as you build your resume uh, and the message that you want to leave with the recruiter. The next competency that we think is important is personal effectiveness. And to me, what this means is just maturity, your own maturity. And as you can see the bullet points up there, we're talking about recognizing strengths and limitations of yourself and others. Clearly define your future plans and interests that match what the company that you're interviewing career types of tracks are so that you can demonstrate that you've thought about what you want to do, that in fact you're not wasting the interviewer's time and you're not wasting your own, that you understand uh, the product or the company that you're interviewing with, and that, that all interviews are two-way communication meetings and those things that you don't understand or wish to know about, you ask the recruiter. We're looking for people that want to learn. If, in fact, people want to learn, we think they're interested. If people want to learn, we think that they're possibly interested and are intelligent and maybe are really considering going to work for us. We enjoy that. That's what we're here for. 
I think that people that demonstrate self-confidence and a maturity and a posit demonstrate a positive approach to others is something that we're looking for. And once again, we'll talk about those types of things. And of course, involve and gain support of others working collectively towards a goal. In terms of this, this leadership conference and everything that we do at Kraft General Foods, we're very interested in people and their orientation to diversity. People working with different kinds of people, regional differences, gender differences, racial differences. We understand that today's workforce is gonna be very, very much different we understand, as you heard Gus Garcia talk about it yesterday at the opening uh, session, uh, along with Rick Wardia, uh, that we are at Kraft General Foods training, making people aware of people's differences and how to manage their differences so that they become a business asset. We are having spending lots of money training people that already work for us. Of course, when we hire in, we want people with us skills. We want people that have been exposed to other types of people. We want people that have worked well with a variety of different people other than themselves, people that respect other people's opinions and styles and lifestyles and can support people other than themselves and different types of people than themselves in a team approach. And that's very important to us. As you'll see, a grouping here, we have initiative, aggressiveness, results orientation. Uh, we talk about, and, and you can read through these, uh, you know, anticipating needs people that have taken personal ownership and, and, and had uh, superior results, uh, people that have persisted in the face of barriers or obstacles to meet and beat expectations, inspire and influence others. What this means to me is people should be thinking about things that they're very, very proud of, things that they've overcome, things that they've, they've uh, felt that they've been ag aggressive about and in fact succeeded in, in times of uh, adversity. Um, that's the, kind, the kinds of questions you're going to get here and the types of things that you should be thinking about prior to walking in is knowing what you feel good about yourself, knowing how that you've demonstrated during your college years or in your personal life, uh, something that came out, something that you're proud of, something that came out differently than everybody expected. Those are the types of things people want to hear about. And these are the types of competencies that, that they'll... They'll, that those types of uh, experiences and examples will speak to. Another one is innovation. And all of us, and I gave an example yesterday of uh, uh, a young man came up to me and said, Hey, uh, I'm from the Human Resources Professional Organization. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk about industrial psychology and things like that. And I was an industrial psychologist. I said, I never said this in an interview, but for instance, I said, when I went to college, they didn't have any industrial psychology courses at my school. But I thought that maybe I wanted to do that. So what I did was I created a course. I got an advisor. I picked several textbooks, and I had an independent study, and I was the only person on campus that was getting a grade in industrial psychology. I felt that I was somewhat innovative enough to do that. I mean, I had read a book about psychologists and industrial psychologists, and I went further to start something up for myself or other people that were interested in it and do something. Now, have I ever used that in an interview? No, I haven't. But, I mean, those are the types of things that uh, uh, people might want to hear about. I'm sure that a lot of people in this room, and we all have in many ways, done those types of things. It is, have you thought about them? Can you convey those messages 
And will somebody, as you do, think that it's innovative? I mean, you know, so often you leave the interview and you haven't thought, and you say, somebody says, well, why don't you tell them about this? Why don't you tell them about starting this club or that club or your approach to this or how you handle the family situation? Okay? So th that's very important. We go judgment, analysis, and decision making. Perceive and evaluate alternatives logically. Analyze an impact of a decision before execution. And make decisions and take action in a timely manner. As I said, you can look at somebody's resume and you can see gaps in it. If somebody's taking eight years to go through UT Pan Am, uh, you better have <laughs> some real rationale for the interviewer or recruiter why that happened. It may be very reasonable and it may have made total sense to everybody. But what somebody might see is, is somebody cannot make a decision. They get into one course, they get into the next course, they quit school, they came back, they didn't, you know, they didn't, they didn't have some line of progression or if they did, they didn't think about it well enough to, to show an interview that, wait a minute, I was in total control of the situation. The decisions were made based on these types of things, and this is why my resume looks the way it does. If, in fact, you don't have explanations for why your resume or the gaps or the times or the different majors or why you went you know, somewhere and then you came back and those types of things, it reflects on your judgment and your decision-making abilities. Can you stay with a decision? Can you, can those types of things? And so you have to consider that because those are the types of things we evaluate when we look at people. Timely manner. Maybe there is something else up here. There are various functions at General Foods, that if you're not timely, for instance, if you're not timely to an interview, you, I, I, I remember meeting people uh, in the lobby of a Miami Hotel, two sales managers, and they were waiting for somebody to come for a college interview. They were three minutes late, and let me tell you, they didn't have to interview the person, because they had already decided, standing there talking to themselves, that the person wasn't getting the job. It was that clear. And, and of course, as a personnel person, I'm not really tied to time as much as they were. And I said, hey, you've got to give me a break. You know, come on, hey, parking, blah, 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 blah. They said, the person should have been here 20 minutes ago. This is a job interview. This doesn't reflect somebody that's taking us seriously. The decision was made. They were, I was, you know, but, I, you know, I remember driving home that day. I said, geez, you know, that was it. That, what, a, what an opportunity to be missed, that they had actually succeeded on campus but had missed their opportunity with the regional manager and the district manager. Bad, bad. But I don't think it's, I don't know if it's fair, but it's very important that you act in a timely manner. You respond in a timely manner. Another thing about this, and, and, and I didn't say this yesterday, but I think it's, it's wise. When you meet people from companies and, and you interview with them or you ask them particular questions, uh, it's always good to respond in a timely manner with a thank you note or something that recognizes you know, that you met, you had a conversation, and that you hope to hear again from somebody. So, uh, it's something not that I think of, but, but from experience, I know that uh, it, it once again brings your name to the forefront, says that you're timely, considerate, personally mature, and you're waiting to be contacted. Efficiency, planning, priority setting. Here again, identify long-term and short-term priorities and establish work plans. Manage diverse and conflicting priorities with judgment and flexibility. Focus on critical objectives without jeopardizing basic responsibilities. The way I get to something like this is I ask somebody to explain the activities that are important to them and to talk about how they manage their day. What we're looking for is we're looking for people's 
main objectives. <laughs> it's not a bad. I don't want to give anybody a stress attack here, but <laughs> but uh, you know what we're looking for here is to say people can juggle more than one ball. We know in today's world that when people come to work for us, they are going to have to handle many different things. They're going to have to handle work and family, and that work may not be their first priority, but they have things that are equally important to them. And it's going to be a strain. And so what we want to do is we want to find people that can understand where they have to go, what they have to do, what's important to them, and be successful at all three or four of them. So if, you're, you know, if, if it was important for people to work while they were in school, but accomplish uh, an academic objective of a double major and play sports, we're very interested in how you handled that and how you juggle those balls so that you came out with a 3.5 average or a 3, you know, a 2.5 or whatever it is, uh, and you accomplished that. And not only did you accomplish it, you accomplished what you wanted to accomplish based on your priorities. Okay? Leadership. And I think this is the last competency before I can start discussing what you can do in terms of how you like impact these competencies and make a good impression on, it, on, a, on an interview recruiter. Um, leadership is very important to us. And let's just look at what it is. In, in certain jobs, we're, we're, very, we're very much drawn to technical <coughs> skills, engineering, technical research, marketing in many ways. But in other jobs, like sales, human resources, logistics, sometimes accounting, although accounting can be a, a particular skill, we're looking for leadership qualities because the jobs and the functions that those functions play uh, are very, they're influencing functions. They're staff functions sometimes or they call for people to have leadership skills, which means achieving results through others, mobilizing work teams, inspiring achievement or superior results, deal constructively with crisis, abrupt changes or ambiguity, and selling ideas and persuading others, either people that you're working with or people that we're selling to internal and external customers. And I think that, that above all, uh, there are plenty of opportunities on campus and in your personal life to demonstrate leadership and working with others. If you have an opportunity, if you're president of a club, if you're president of your fraternity, uh, those are important things. If you're the Eagle Boy Scout, uh, and you've worked with uh, church groups or choirs or what have you, what we're looking for is, is, is that you took responsibility initially, you had to influence a group of people that probably didn't want to do that, and we know that in many cases, if you're in those situations, you're the one making the call when nobody else really seems to care, or nobody really knows, so you're dealing with ambiguities. And we know that probably you weren't successful in it unless you could sell ideas to other people and just make it work. So leadership skills and the opportunity to lead is something that if you have it, you should take the opportunity to grasp it and do it and experience it and try to be successful at it. Because it's something that people look at. Everybody wants to hire a leader. Everybody wants to hire somebody that has got skills with working with other people uh, and has been successful at that. So if you ever have an opportunity to get yourself in a situation like that, you shouldn't just pass it up because it's very important to us.
Now, I've got this overhead that says, what can you do to prepare? And this is the time where hopefully I tie together the, like, the last 14 overheads and say, okay, this is what we're looking for. And if I haven't given you a few hints on what I think you can do to prepare, this is, this is what I'm going to be talking about now. First thing, technical experience. Whenever you have an opportunity to become involved in, and I've mentioned this, summer jobs, internships, co-ops, where you're working with a company, take advantage of that opportunity because one, companies, one, companies want to see people that have worked, companies want to see people that have managed time and money, and companies that have people working for them are very apt to hire people right out of school because, let me tell you, if you have seven semesters with a company or a summer with a company and they have observed you working for them, that tells them more than any interview anywhere for anybody on any campus in a half hour. I myself am a product of a summer internship with Maxwell House Coffee. Uh, Diane Hypus, who was on the, the engineer from Texas A&M, was one of our co-ops at Maxwell House Coffee for four years. When we went out to college campuses, we said, well, we've got these people, but you know, Diane Hypus is graduating and we've just spent four years with her here at the plant. She's performed very well. She knows all our processes. We like her. She gets along with everybody. Why are we even out of campus? Why not just hire Diane? We can't be more sure of a candidate. And we did. And here she is, talking to people uh, eight years later as the head of our minute rice department. So what we really like and what we do a lot of is we establish the kinds of programs, co-op programs and internships with the intent to hire these people. There's no better, no safer way for a human resource guy to go than hire somebody you know that's worked in the place you're going to hire him into. So that's important. Outside workshops, like the one we're doing today. If there are more outside workshops or anything that you can glean away from the academic setting, what I'm saying is people that are our businessmen coming in to lecture, teach out other courses, do a seminar on a particular subject, take advantage of it. I remember when I was in school, uh, graduate school, and we'd been lectured and lectured to by a number of professors. One day on a Saturday, uh, a man from AT&T came over to do behavior modeling. We said, well, what's behavior modeling? We haven't read about it in the books. Well, why haven't we? Because really nobody was doing it except maybe AT&T. What they were doing is they were developing it, and they were using it as a management training tool what behavior modeling was, and it was really, they were behavior modeling people how to interview college graduates and incoming people for AT&T. And they would have professional interviewers, human resource people and scientists, you know, industrial psychologists, do interviews, film them, show them to managers, and ask them to copy. Just watch and copy. That was behavior modeling. And it was becoming a very big training and development thing. Of course, I hadn't learned about it at school, but I had learned about it by sitting in a seminar for three hours with some guy that was actually doing it at AT&T, and I could talk about it at interviews because it was state of the art, people were doing it, it was a trend, and you know people were considering that kind of stuff, and I think it gave me an edge, plus it, 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 it rounded me out in my, in my area of expertise. So I think any kind of outside workshops, anything you can get or refer to uh, or learn from uh, is worthwhile. Fourth thing, Understand the industry. First of all, you have to research the company that you're interviewing with. People that call General Foods General Mills don't get hired. People that don't understand what products we make annoy us. 
we are a big company, a mega company, and we have brands like Jell-O, Post Cereal, and we don't want to get confused with Kellogg's. On the other hand, if you're interested in General Foods and a food or packaged convenience company, what you may be interested in is Kellogg's or General Mills. So what I'm saying is know the company you're interviewing with, know what they're doing, but also know what their competitors are doing. Because I think it is impressive when you say, hey, I understand that uh, Kellogg's is doing this. What are you doing to combat it? Because this is what these people do. I mean, we spend our lives uh, defending our market areas because in 85% of the market areas we have, we are the leader. And everybody's trying to knock us off. So, I mean, if you understand what these people are doing and that sometime you're going to be doing that if you come to work for our company, it's good to know what the competitors are doing and what the company's doing. And understand who the competitor is and who the company is that you're interviewing with. Okay? In terms of diversity, I can't say enough about being involved in campus and community support groups or showing an understanding of, of, of knowing what the issues are, why we're doing what we're doing, what the population is going to look like in the year 2000, and where we have to go. We are living in a very different, changing world. And the types of things that we were doing 30 years ago are no longer appropriate to attract and retain a workforce that's coming in the year 2000 or even here now. We've got to have people that understand this. And we're very much interested in having people work with different types of people. And. Uh, I can't say enough about it. Uh, I particularly, when I interview, I, I, I try to get to this competency and I ask people what they have done. I ask people how they've been involved on campus. I ask people their feelings. I want to know. Because if we don't hire people in that are in the know, then we're just going to have to try to either train them when they're there, and that's time and money. So we, we want to, as we bring the new workforce in, we want a running start. So this is very important. On personal effectiveness, I think you should know yourself. I think you should know what you want to accomplish. I think you should know your limitations. I think you should understand if, if it's going to be sales and people are going to be moving every year and a half, and if you can't do that, if you don't want to do that, I don't think that you should be in a sales interview. Or you should be selecting a company that is headquartered where, where you want to live and where there's lots of career advancement opportunities in one place. There are plenty of people around that have gone had amazing careers and have never relocated ever. They've been in the right place at the right time and they've known that they've got a growth organization where they are or they've moved to it and have grown there. Other functions such as sales feel it's very important to get different types of market experiences. So they move people a lot. If you're on fast track, maybe it's every year, year and a half. We're trying to do stuff about that. We're trying to like give people experiences in one particular area or market area because we lose people that way. It's very expensive for a company to lose people. Not only expensive for the company, but it, it's, I think, puts uh, many times a uh, crimp in people's own careers, you know, having to move or having to change jobs. So understand where you want to go and does the company that you're interviewing with, are they in sync with the types of things that you want to do? And is there a fit? Remember, as I said at the beginning, interviews are two-way communication. So understand that. And ask the questions that you need to know. And know 
that you're trying to get into a company or you're building your resume to get you into a field that supports your own personal goals and the types of things, your lifestyle, et cetera, that you want to have. Make sure there's a match. On communication, I think this is very important. Expose yourself to public speaking opportunities any way that you can. I think that if you feel comfortable speaking in public, you have power to express your ideas to many people. And I think that if you do that and you're capable of doing that, you will exceed your peers in terms of success. I put up Toastmasters, a great organization I understand wherever I go in the country and we talk about public speaking or the ability to speak in public. People tell me about Toastmasters and that's a club or an organization. I understand somebody came up to me yesterday that there's a Toastmasters on campus. It's a good thing to do, let me tell you. I remember some of my experiences. Uh, I didn't think I had any problem until I got up there. Boy, that was something. So if you can do it, do it. Uh, the second thing I have up there is understand computer graphic packages. I myself, and I hate to have this on paper, I'm computer illiterate. Let's say the fast one. But anyway, uh, Harvard graphics, you know, all the types of things that people do now. And I'm sure everybody here is qualified. I mean, that's what we expect from people. And we expect them to do that because, in, like in our sales forces, everybody has got a laptop computer. They've got it in their car, their trunk, their house. And they're, they're hooked into so much market information now that, like never before, a guy selling Jello or Post cereal 10 years ago is not doing it the same way as we want them to do it now. The, the market data that we have can have a person almost walk in the, the, the night before, prepare a sales presentation on his computer, the graphics, everything with the stuff that was there yesterday, right off of you know, Nielsen or what have you, and walk into a store or present it to a customer. If you don't have those types of skills, you're going to be hurting, you're going to have some catching up to do. Work on written communication skills. I haven't heard a lot about it lately. But five or six years ago, apparently, kids were coming out of the best schools and they couldn't write a business memo. Somewhere in our educational system, we lost the ability to communicate on paper. It's very important in organizations to have that ability. If, in fact, you're writing papers in school, you're a junior and you're a senior, and you know who you are, <laughs> your teachers are saying, hey, run on sentence, I can't understand this, this is a different idea, this is a different paragraph, your punctuation is bad, I can't understand what you're saying here. I'm not talking about spelling, we fixed that with you know, all these computer programs. But, but those types of things, you know that you need help and you should get it. You should get into a business writing course, either here or outside, you should work on your writing because it's going to help you to be able to communicate in written form. And there's ways to do that, and there's ways to make sure that uh, uh, you can be effective on paper as well as orally. And then, last but not least, be prepared to discuss, and this is for the interview, of course, items of that you show initiative, aggressiveness, and energy level, your accomplishments that you're proud of, and how you are different or as good as the next candidate on a schedule of possibly 13 or 26 people. How are you going to stand out? When we talk about energy level, that's very important. The way I get to energy level is I just ask somebody how they spend their day. What do you do? Tell me what you do in a normal day. You get up? Yep. I get up around 12, you know. 
I hate, I hate more. I'm not a morning person. Really, I'm not. And then, and then I like to have a really big breakfast. And then I kind of watch, you know, my soaps. And then, you know, I get to class late, and uh, that's okay because uh, I never read this stuff anyway. And then, you know, oh, you go through there. And then, and then I ask the next guy, I go, tell me about your day. Because I get up at five, I run. I walk the dog, I mow the lawn, then I have a, a very short breakfast because I like to read three papers before I go to school, so I'm fine. Then I take, of course, I like to take 26 courses, you know, a semester, and blah, 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 blah. Well, I have, I've got two different pictures here, and I'm thinking, like, why, you know, which guy is going to be the guy that's at the store at 8 o'clock, and when I give him, like, 10 extra stores to do in a week, who's going to be able to do it? Energy level and aggressiveness, very important. Okay, and and uh, I believe somebody said that our salesperson uh, uh, during the women in the workplace seminar yesterday. She said, you know, we talk about you know, not even the technical skills of where you've been in sales, but they evaluate energy, aggressiveness, people's accomplishments, and, you know, and you know they're on a roll, you know, constantly. So it's very important if, in fact, that's what you want to do. If that's the type of person you are, and you feel that that's the best match for yourself. So. With that, um, we've got a couple more minutes. Uh, I can answer some questions if you like, either about craft general foods, uh, any kind of interviewing or resume types of questions, and uh, I'd be happy to do that if anybody has it. Don't be shy. <laughs> All right, well, okay. I think you should get it to fit in one page, and I think you should have a cover letter. And I think if you concentrate on the things that I talked about, a one-page cover letter and a one-page resume should be all that you need. Because if you do, and you're looking towards the types of things that we just discussed, your resume will carry you, and you will be able to talk around your resume. Be sure you can do that, by the way. That's the other question I have. I've read your resume. Actually, I probably haven't. But please talk your way through your resume to me, and that way I can understand exactly what your thought process was as you did your summer work and your stuff and your college work, whatever. And I don't care if I'm talking with a, with a, a, a candidate that's been in the workforce 20 years or just started. So understand your own resume, understand what's on it, and why you've highlighted various things. I mean, if you want to practice anything, practice talking through your resume and who you are and what's on that piece of paper. Because a resume is just a piece of paper. What people are looking at is they're looking at, they're saying, that person impressed me. Where's their resume? That's what they're doing. Okay? Any other questions? Um, do you have to put your age and where were you born? No. No, 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 no. And you can, be, you, you know, I'm sure if you, uh, you know, check with student services, you know, age, birth, all those types of things, uh, nobody wants to know about uh, anymore. In fact, uh, in fact, I would make a point not having that stuff on it. It shows that you're an informed student. I remember my first resume, I had my age, and somebody, an industrial psychologist, came to me, I was interned, and... Uh, and they said, I like your resume, but you have age here. That like, shows us that you really don't know what you're talking about. I said, okay. <laughs> Took that off. Thanks for the feedback. You know? I mean, seriously, that's a true story. And, and uh, when I was preparing. How about a picture? Pardon? A picture. No pictures. Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> no pictures. Go ahead. I think the cover sheet is, is a short, uh, it should be a very succinct letter describing who you are, one or two things that make you qualified for the type of position you're looking for, in other words, what your employment objective is, and where you can be reached if it doesn't say so on your resume, I mean, if there's a change, you know, uh, you know a change in address or something like that. But it should be very short, and it should... What, what, what you're trying to do is have the person flip the page and look at the resume. 
Any other questions? Yes. No. I think eventually, I think eventually uh, the first interviews are, are, are getting to know each other, etc. Um, people aren't making hiring decisions on whether you have a four-year-old or not, and should not be. I mean, they should be making decisions on uh, your, your technical competencies and the other things that you bring to the job. So I wouldn't be, uh, you know, I don't think it's, it's appropriate to tell people on your resume that you have a four-year-old child, this, that, and the other thing. Uh, I don't really think it's appropriate, you know, for anybody to, to really talk about, you know, how old they are and how old their kids are on their resume and things like that either anymore. It used to be, you know, kind of standard stuff. You know, the important thing uh, that, that you should realize is when you're employed, uh, what people are concerned about is how you perform your job. And how you do that is what matters. And the arrangements that you would have to make, uh, you know, f for your child, I mean, is, is, is really your business. And uh, I've, I've seen everything from people traveling with their kids to people not traveling in the various daycare situations. Uh, I mean, this is the way of the world, and companies are becoming more flexible. We've got big work family policies, and we, we're constantly striving to, to help people with work family issues. But, yes? I, well, I, I don't know. Each campus probably has its own guidelines. And uh, what I would do is, is I would immediately, you know, fire off a letter and say, hey, hey thank you for interviewing me, uh, this, that, and the other thing, and I'll be waiting to hear from you as soon as possible. I mean, it, it could take a long time because uh, people are not only interviewing here, they're interviewing in maybe a dozen more campuses, and people are just jockeying, you know, what the actual hiring offers are going to be. Uh, I would I would ask the interviewer when you might expect to hear, and then if you don't, in a week or two, you know, I would I would I wouldn't be over anxious, but I wouldn't let it drop either. I think a continual call is appropriate, especially if you have other job offers, you know, pending things. I mean, let's face it, you can't just keep somebody off on a limb. Plus, I think it expedients the process a little bit. Any other questions? Oh, well, you've been a marvelous. Oh, okay, one more. Sir. Yes. Oh, I think if you're invited back for a second interview, uh, I, I think you should immediately say we're serious here. I mean, first interview is serious. If you make it through the first and you get into the second, you've made the first cut. It's serious, it's serious for you, <laughs> and it's serious for the company. Because typically, you know, uh, probably you interview 13 people, you might only have two to three people that you might even want to look at at the next step. So I think that's serious. I, I take all interviewing opportunities very seriously. That's what I've been trying to say here. You know, everything's got to be serious, else you're just wasting people's time. They'll sense that and they'll be upset, and you won't ever get that second interview. Okay. Maybe three or four for an entry-level job. I remember when I was hired, I I was interviewed uh, at a plant. Uh, I then went up and I had to interview like seven people up at corporate headquarters. I mean, that was a day, a full day of interviewing. I remember I interviewed with Citibank. Uh, I had like one interview, they invited me back. I met with six other people and then I was invited back one more time, you know, that type of thing. So, even, you might even have three uh, intercompany ones, you know. I mean, you know, when you're being promoted. Three or four interviews. Well, one more. Should you always be serious? For example, 
example, if the employer um, makes a joke and you do not understand it, that I mean, you just keep on the other thing. You got to go. You got, I, I say go with the flow, but be careful. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you know, just read the social situation. Uh, the the important thing is be professional. I'd say be professional rather than serious. You know, what's appropriate? If somebody makes a joke and it's inappropriate, I wouldn't laugh. I'd be professional about it. Okay, you know what I mean? I mean, I think that's a difference. All right. Well, thank you very much. I know that we've had tough conditions, and I'm sorry about the overheads and everything else, but I hope you've learned something that will be of value to you. Uh, we've really enjoyed being here a lot, and uh, these are the types of things that we do that we think are, are really just fun and worthwhile. So I hope that we've, we've imparted something to you that you can use and uh, find a value. Thank you.